And I was in the little boxes just for the battle. Amen. But, you know, we got to be determined. How many people are determined? Are you determined to hold out to the end? That Jesus is with you. And I'm here to take the pain. You got to know that you have salvation and you can fill it in your soul. You got to be determined. Amen. Thank you, Lord. I'm so glad, so glad that, that you know, uh, we had somebody take care of that hot water, take care of that situation. Amen. I'm going to have somebody fix my air in the car. Thank you, Lord. But today I'm going to praise him. Amen. Today I'm going to lift him up. Uh, what are you going to do today? Uh, are you going to pop your hands? Are you going to stop your feet? Are you going to lift all the praise? Are you going to break that door shut? Take our stuff and we're gonna take this 
time on our praise and our worship team. Never going back. Can't go back to the way it used to be. Hallelujah. If you really think about that song, turning back is not an option. Uh, when you think about every day with Jesus, it's sweeter than the day before. Going back is not an option. Uh, I mean, every day with Jesus, if you just spend one day with Him, amen, going back is not an option. Amen. Amen. Going back is not an option. Amen. Mother uh, Davis wants to testify. Amen.
I said, how do we know Tiffany? She said, we graduated from high school together. I said, oh, so that means you're old enough, young enough to be my daughter. I said, Tiffany is my daughter. And she said, really? She said, I am so sorry that happened. She said, the nurse is a skilled nurse, but still, that doesn't negate the fact that she was wrong and out of order. I'll take care of that. She said, this bed looks like it's too short for him. Let me get a longer bed for you. Look, I need a hot water bottle. I know he got a heat pack. Let me get, I got to make him comfortable. That's the way you're supposed to do in a hospital environment. You're supposed to show a spirit hospitality. You're supposed to show that spirit no matter who's watching. But I thank and praise God for favor. Look, young lady, you do my job. She said, I've got good long term memory. I don't have good short term. But when she said, do you know Tiffany Lawson? I said, maybe she was a client. She said, no, we went to high school together. I said, wow. That's kind of like Father Time is picking my pockets, but it's all good. I feel you. And I, she said, this is Tiffany's brother. I said, yes, it is. She said, then yeah, she said, let me give you these cards so you can go down to the cafeteria and get lunch when you get ready. I said, you got Starbucks coffee open. Here, here goes a card for you when you come in and get you some Starbucks coffee and treat yourself. I thank God for favor. And any kind of testimony time comes forth and you breathing in and out, you should be popping up like popcorn. And even if you just say, I just thank you for life, health, and strength. Because you know what? Everybody ain't got that. Somebody in the earth is home today. Somebody had to wait for somebody to come and bathe them. And here I am. Activity of my limbs. I can move on my own. I can talk on my own. Praise God. I don't count that like me. Pray for me in my house in Jesus' name. Glory to God. Glory to God. Amen. We certainly thank God for these testimonies. Thank God for faith. Amen. Thank you. God is good. He watches over us. Amen. The angels watch over us. Amen. Hallelujah. We thank God for the anointing and the service thus far. And as we move forward into our service, uh, the announcements, you should have been handed the adults, uh, the announcements uh, for July 18th. And um, we want to welcome all of our visitors here today. Uh, whether by virtual service or whether by uh, in person, we thank God for you being with us and celebrating with us even on today. And we want to uh, wish anybody that had a, a happy anniversary or a happy birthday. Amen. We thank God for you and we celebrate you on today. And we want to certainly uh, want to thank and praise God for one of our own. Amen. Uh, Brother Duru. He said that he'll be entering into VCOM and getting his doctorates in pharmacy. Yeah. Thank you, God. Thank you. We certainly thank God for you, man, God. Amen. Yeah. Uh, I want to anoint you and pray for you for your great success. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. I know God is good yeah. and his mercy endureth forever. I know your family is very proud of you. Thank you, Lord. Yeah. We praise God for you. What a great accomplishment uh, that is. And I'm going to call you Dr. Guru. <laughs> Amen. We praise God. Uh, certainly, we also, uh, upcoming events, we would like to thank God for those that attended the uh, Unity Revival on last week. Had an awesome time. Uh, the anointing was here. The preaching, the preaching word was here. And we certainly celebrate God all that he is doing. Also, too, we have our brotherhood this week, and that will be happening at 6.30 in our library. Thank you, Jesus. So we want all the brothers to come out. I had a good Bible uh, uh, brotherhood meeting on the other day, and uh, we want you to come out. All the brothers come out. Also, too, Bishop and Lady Quinn would like to thank and take time to thank everyone who celebrated our retirement. A special thanks to Sister Hall uh, for making the event a success. Amen. The event was a great success. Thank you, Jesus. It was a great The anointing came in, didn't it? <laughs> I said, look at God. I'm going to take every opportunity to bring the anointing in. That's just the song that song. Thank you, Lord. Sister Matthew, if you're listening, thank God for you. <laughs> she 
sang that song. Thank you, Lord. Amen. So we praise God. We praise God for that. Also, I'll uh, say today you should have a flyer in your hand. Uh, Christian Ministries Open House. Uh, positioning to be a community cornerstone. That's what we want to be. A community cornerstone that falls in line with our with our vision. Amen. So uh, August 14th from 2 to 4 p.m. here at Christian Ministries. Also, we're showcasing a space that's upstairs for entrepreneurs. Amen. They're going to rent space to start out their business. And that uh, space and that project will be called the Achievers, Building Equity and Equality. Uh, during our open house, we're going to have a panel discussion uh, by chatting with Sonia and friends. And they'll be talking about uh, Christian ministries and the uh, adventures that we are proposing uh, to help build back better, as uh, President Joe Biden says, in our community. Thank you, Lord. We want to be a staple. Amen? Amen. Amen. Y'all ain't, ain't, ain't celebrating with me. We want to be a staple in the community. Amen? Be a cornerstone. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. We're going to have our youth development academy. We're working on plans to getting that going as well. We've already got established our New Horizons Daycare Center. Amen. Come on, give God a praise. Starting on Monday, uh, we'll have a total of six students, so we have a total of 29 positions, amen, and we have six of them uh, fulfilled, and we thank God for that, and our uh, daycare where every day is a new learning and growing experience, and with our Youth Development Academy, uh, we're equipping a generation, amen, so we want you to prepare to come and to fellowship with us. And on our open house, uh, we'll have light refreshments uh, served by uh, Lisa, Lisa Heidelberg. Amen. And a Dynamite night woman, I met her. She came to the church and we talked about her doing refreshments. And you know how you just meet somebody and you feel like you're friends? Amen. That's how, that's how I, when, I, when we met, felt like we'd known each other for years. Thank you, Lord. So we're looking forward. We're looking forward to this great event. Please come out and support your church. Support your church. Support your pastor. Amen. Support the events that are going on so that we can uh, fulfill that vision that God has given to us. We are carrying fellowship. Amen. Leading souls to Christ. Strengthening members and families. Making disciples. Equipping them for service and community ministry. Amen. So everything we do, it centers around that. Also, too, um, Looking here at our announcements, uh, we talked about the grand opening, we talked about the daycare center, uh, serving two and a half to 12 year old, amen, from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. Our order of services for the day, uh, Sundays and Christian education, 9.30 a.m. Our morning worship begins promptly at 11, Bible study, uh, Wednesdays at 6 p.m. and Friday, uh, prayer at 6 p.m. So we thank God for these announcements. Come on and give God a praise. Amen. And then take these announcements with you so you can be able to refer back to them. Uh, it's blessing time. How many know it's blessing time? Blessing time in the house of the Lord. And as we uh, bring forth Deacon Fields, as he comes forth, amen, we want him to look cheerful and happy up here. He looks like they're a little tired. But uh, how many know this? No rest for the weary. <laughs> nah, you, you, you pass me. You know I mean? <laughs> we thank God. We thank God. And God loves a cheerful giver. And he wants you to bless the house of the Lord. Press down, shake it together, and allow things to be running over. Amen. So you give into God's bosom. Amen. So we want to ask the church to stand. Thank you, Jesus. Let us pray. Gracious Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we certainly thank you for this opportunity to sow seed into the kingdom, this opportunity to give. We ask you, Lord, that you bless 30, 60, and 100 fold. Pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 
Right now, then, we turn you over to the hands of our ship. Come home and bless the Lord to you. Yeah. Come home and bless the Lord to you. Come home and bless the Lord to you. Come home and bless the Lord to you. Hebrews chapter number 8, it reads as thus, by faith, when he was called to go into a place which he was, should after receive an inheritance, obeyed. And he went out, not knowing whether he went. By faith, he sojourned in the land of promise, yes. as in a strange country, dwelling in tabernacles with Isaac and Jacob, the heirs with him of the same promise. For he looked for a city which had foundations, whose builder and maker is God. Gracious Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for this word on today. We ask you, Lord, that you open up our understanding. Lord, send forth an anointing that makes you preach it easy. Open up our ears that we may hear the engrafted word of God to the saving of our soul. Father, we thank you and we praise you. Give you great glory and honor. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Amen. We certainly thank God. Thank God for you. And may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Amen. We know the Lord is a healer. The Lord is a and I want to pay close attention with me in verse number 8. Yes. It says, by faith, when he was called, by faith Abraham, when he was called to go out into a place, he should after receive inheritance, obey, and went out, not knowing whether he went. By faith he sojourned in the land of promise. And I want to take for a subject on today, pursuing the promise by faith. Pursuing the promise by faith. Can you say that with me? Pursuing the promise by faith. The very foundation foundation of Abraham's faith 
was his call and the promise that God gave him. The very foundation of your faith is God calling you and making you great and precious promises. When you believe, it literally becomes the very foundation of your faith. And when that becomes the very foundation of your faith, the calling and the promises, God expects you to pursue after them. God expects you to pursue after them. You see, the evidence that Abraham had faith was his obedience. The evidence that you have faith in God is your obedience to the calling and the promises. When you believe God, you obey God. The Bible says that faith without works is dead. Abraham believed God. And based on his belief, he pursued after God and the promises that God had made. When we believe God and we trust God, we pursue after Him and the promises that He has made because that's the cornerstone of your faith. A lot of people pursue after different things because they have faith in those different things that they can achieve but God wants you to pursue after the promises that he has made unto you because you have faith in what God has said. You have faith in what God has said. Abraham, the Bible says, that, 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 that he believed and obeyed God. And, and that faith walked with him started with a call. God called him. He told him to Abraham, I want you to leave your kindred, leave your mother and your father and your relatives and go to a place wherein I shall show thee. Abraham, he left, not knowing whether he was going, but he took heed to the call. He took heed to the call of the Lord. When, when, when God in his plan for Abraham, he was he was literally separating him from his family because Abraham's family were idolaters. They worshipped other gods. And God was, was, was calling him out from among them so that he would be able to transform him. That he would be able to convert him. Abraham, I don't know if you know your history, but Abraham, he was the, the founder of the Hebrew, uh, uh, the Hebrew uh, uh, nation. He was the founder, hallelujah, of really a bedstone, a cornerstone of our faith. The Bible declares that Abraham, uh, he was a man of faith uh, that believed and trusted in God. You see, when God gives you a call, he puts a call on your life. And he wants you to, to, to branch out. He wants you to leave uh, uh, your family, leave your mother and your father, leave out of idolatrous works and, and follow after him so that he can transform you. He can renew you. Uh, I want y'all to hear me today. God wants to renew us. God wants to transform us. The Bible says for us to not to be conformed, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. That's why the Lord says, come out from among them and be separate, saith the Lord. That's why when he puts that call on your life, he, he calls you to, to make a difference. He calls you to come out of darkness, to, to walk in this marvelous light so that, so that you can get to know your God, so that you can get to understand your God, to know that, that there should be no other God before him, to, to let you know that you should not make any graven images, that, that you should not take the name of the Lord your God in vain, that, that you should honor him. Amen. 
Abraham had to know that he had to honor God. When, when God calls us, God wants us to know we have to honor him. God wants us to know that we have to put all of our confidence in him. So when God called him, when God called him, made that call, hallelujah, he was calling Abraham from out from among his kindred, from out from among his family. You see, you see, I want you to understand, beloved, that God calls you before you seek after him. Uh, you, you just don't start calling and worshiping God. The, the Bible says it's the goodness of the Lord uh, that leads you to repentance. Uh, uh, you're here, not of your own volition. You're, you're here because God has called you. God has summoned you. God has a work for you to do. God has made some great and precious promises, and he has put those promises on your life. So God says, come out, hallelujah, and worship me. Come out and understand me. Come out and know me so that I can transform you, so that I can convert you, so I can give you my word, so I can put my anointing upon you, so I can make you a new creature, created in Christ Jesus, so, so, that, so that you will know that there's no other God, but, but I'm God all by myself, that, that I am that I am, that, that I'm a way maker, that I'm a heart fixer, that I'm a oh, and I'm a mountain mover, that, that I keep all of my promises. The Bible said when God made promise to Abraham and he couldn't find nobody else greater to scrap out. God swore by himself saying I will bless thee on me not because there's nobody else greater. There's nobody else greater. Uh, and you got to come out of stuff to be able to understand and see God. You, you got to make a move. Come out of your comfort zone to understand and seek after your God. You, you got to put your confidence in Him. Hallelujah. Who's able to do exceeding? Who's able to do abundantly above all that you're able to ask or think? Hallelujah. So Abraham, he, he, he obeyed God's word and, and God sought after him before he sought after God. And, and that's the same way with us. God seeks after you before you begin to seek after him. And, and God wants you to come out. God wants you to come out. Tell your neighbor, I got to come out. I got I to gotta come out. You see, God, he calls you out to clean you up. Uh, God calls you out to clean you up. He calls you out to clean you up, to convert you, to put his word in you, to put an anointing upon you. And when God cleans you up and calls you out from the world, of the lifestyle of sin and shame, God, God calls you out of that stuff. Hallelujah. God calls you out of the world of sin and shame and, and disappointment and, and delusion. God calls you out. Hallelujah. So that he can make you over. Hallelujah. How many know God wants to make you over? Hallelujah. God calls the oh my God. I feel like preaching up in here. You see, God calls no good people, people uh, that are wayward, people that have lost their way, and, and he cleans them up. God specializes in redoing. He specializes in makeovers. He, he specializes in building you up uh, and let you know that you have an inheritance among them that are sanctified. God, God has a way of renewing your mind. He, he has a way of restoring your health, of restoring your faith. God has a way to let you know that you are not uh, the tail that you are the head. Hallelujah. God lets you know, hallelujah, that He loves you, that, that He cares about you. Oh, God knows how to set you free from every captivity. Oh, my God, the enemy wants to hold us bound, but, but God has a way uh, to free us. Uh, his name is Jesus. God has a way to set us free. Hallelujah, his name is Jesus. And if you put your hope in him, if you put your confidence in him, he'll transform you. He told Peter, he said, Peter, Simon, Peter, the devil has desired to sift you as me. But Jesus said, I pray for you that your faith will not fail. He said, I pray for you that your faith will fail not. You see, your faith is precious to God. Your, your faith is precious to God. Your faith is precious to God. The, the Bible says that the trial of your faith is much more precious than gold that perishes. Though it be tried with fire. You see, my God, they 
was testifying here today. Hallelujah. And they was going through the fire. Hallelujah. And they was going through some tests there. They were going through some trials. But, but all those tested trials were doing was just purifying their faith. Yeah. It was purifying their confidence in God. How do you know you got to be tried? Oh God, you got to be tried. Your faith has to be tried to bring you to a place where you can have confidence in your God. You see, God, God knows. God knows. I'm, I'm about done up in here. But you see, God knows about, about you and he knows about your lifestyle. So God wants you to come out from among them and, and be separate, saith the Lord. God, God wants you to be exclusively worshiping him. God, God wants you to know him in the power of his might. Hallelujah, in the fellowship of his suffering. God, hallelujah, wants you to be made conformable unto the death of his son Jesus. Because, hallelujah, if we don't, if we don't reign with him, hallelujah, if we don't suffer with him, we won't reign with him. How many, how many of you know that I want to be just like Jesus? I, I want to be just like the Lord. I, I want to allow my God. I want to be like Jesus. Because he's our strength. He, he's our rock. He, our salvation. He's our hope. Hallelujah. Every test, every trial that you endure is bringing you to that end to, to be like Jesus. To be like him that is hallelujah that died on the cross for you. To be like him that is able to pick you up and turn you around and place your feet on that solid ground. And, and you know, once the Lord, once the Lord converts you, you see, God knows, He understands. Once He converts you, my God, He sends you back. Hallelujah to those people he brought you out of because God wants you to be his testimony. God, God wants you to show him all, saying that uh, look what the Lord has done. You see, people should know you. Uh, hallelujah, not after your former life. They should know you after your present life. Uh, my God, who am I talking to today? Hallelujah, God wants you to be the light. Uh, God wants you to be his witness. So, so that's why God delivers you from darkness uh, to light, from the power of Satan uh, unto him. So that he can show you all. So he can clean you up. So when you walk in the room, people will know and take notice uh, that you've been with God. Uh, how many of you know that people got to know uh, that you've been with God? Uh, that's just like Moses when he went up on the mountaintop. Hallelujah, he came back and his face was glistening and, and shining because Hallelujah had put a veil on his face because they knew that he had been with God. Oh my God, your very conversation should change. Your very speech should change. People ought to know that you've been with God. Your, your outfit should change, my God. Your, your way of character should change. People ought to know that you've been with God. That's Oh my God, so he can clean you up. That's why you should attend every service. That's why you should be in your Bible. That's why you should seek the Lord while he may be found. And why you should call upon him while he is near. Because God wants to clean you up. God wants to change your mindset. Because God wants to show you all. God wants to put you on a pedestal. God, my God, God wants to let everybody know that he is God. And and sisters that that's what we got to do. We got to be in this life and we've got to become what God has desired us to become. And, and that takes a sacrifice. That, oh my God, that takes a sacrifice. And in order to do that, you've got to lay aside every weight and, and the sin that does so easily beset you. That, oh my God, in order to do that, oh God, you've got to understand your mind. You've got to take note of your mind. And, and if your affections are on things above, you, you've got to bring down those strongholds and take those thoughts into captivity and put them on Jesus. You know, a lot of people get destroyed because they ain't got their mind on Jesus. Uh, a lot of people fall by the wayside because they haven't sought after God. They haven't walked in His calling and His purpose. And they don't really understand why God has called them. Hallelujah. I'm trying to tell you today that God is trying to get you to separate from the world and, and walk in his ways so that you can know him. Oh my God, that you can know him, know who he is, and walk by 
by faith and not by sight. God wants you to pursue after Him. And as the deer panted after the water brook, so so panted my soul after Thee, O oh God. And you gotta say, soul, I can't wait to be in His presence. I, I can't wait to give Him glory. I can't wait to give Him thanks. You see, God wants to build you up that, that in everything that you start to give Him thanks. God, God wants you to know that hallelujah, that Jesus is the best thing that, that has ever happened to you. My God, in order for you to know that, you've got to be in situations and conditions. You've got to go through some hell. And you've got to be in a place. My God, I feel like preaching up in here. God is going to put you in some places where you're going to have some doubt. When you're going to have some fear. And, and God wants you to know that you can trust Him. Oh my God. When, when I was first starting out, hallelujah, in this road, I, I was having babies after babies. Not me, but my wife. I was there with her. Hallelujah. We was going through conditions. We was going through some situations. Oh God. And God met me uh, in a solitary place. God, God met me. And He told me. He told me. He said, and you believe my word, but you don't trust me. Oh, my God. When God said that, he begins to open up my understanding. He said, you believe that I did it for Moses. You, you believe that I did it for Abraham. But you don't trust that I do it for you. Uh, God, help me. He said, these are ordinary men. But they had an extraordinary God on their side. Uh, you've got to realize that you may be ordinary, but you got to the ordinary gods on your side. And I begin to weep. I begin to cry. And I said, Lord, I'm going to trust you. I'm going to put my confidence in you. I said, Lord, show me how to trust you. Oh, my God. That's when all hell broke loose. Oh, God. And I had to go to him. Put my confidence in him. And God worked it out. You know that the Lord will work it out. God will work it out. If you put your trust in Jesus, not just some things, but everything is going to work out. You see, when God dealt with me about trusting Him, you see, God talked to me about His promises. Oh, yes. Before you can trust God, you've got to know about God. Promises. You got to know that God said that He'll never leave you, nor forsake you. He'll be with you always, even until the end of the world. You see, God will call you, God will sanctify you, and God will give you some great and precious promises. You see, God, can I just talk about Him just for a moment? You see, God, God told me when I was back there at Greater Bethlehem Temple, I was in the parking lot. I was talking to Brother John Henry. Oh God, and we were making our pledges in God. We were making our boast in the Lord. And I told him, I said, Brother, God is going to call me to the ministry. God is going to call me to the pastorate. And God is going to call me to be a full-time pastor in his sanctified church. Come on, buddy. Somebody say amen. Oh, Lord, that was God. That was God calling me. That was God. And I said, Lord, you have the performance. Lord, you have to make a way. So God put me in situations. God put me in conditions where I couldn't trust in man, but I had to trust in God. You see, God will speak to you. I'm not the only one that God has spoken to. What is God telling you? What is God putting in your heart? What is God saying? What is God showing you? The Bible says, we're not a vision. And I know God. I know He's talking. I know God. If you're listening, God is giving you a vision. God is putting a hope that lies beyond the grave. God is working in you both the will. 
God is calling, that which God is putting in your hearts. Oh, you want to clap your hands and give God a praise. If you're not pursuing, just repent and say, Lord, help me. If you don't know, just fall on your knees and cry out to your God. Say, Lord, I know you got me here for a reason. Lord, I know you called me. I know you anointed me. And what would you have me to do? And if your mind is not focused on the Lord, you got to pray and say, Lord, focus my mind. Lord, help my mind. Lord, let me set my affections on things above where Christ should Turn around. 
says that Abraham's faith had to be perfected. Your faith has to be perfected. You may have some hills. You may have some valleys. But hang on in there. You may have some rumps. But stay right there. Because he that shall come. He will come. Believe it. 
trust in God. We know that what God has said, it shall come to pass. And while God, what Abraham was doing, the Bible said that he was looking for a city. <laughs> Why he was moving. Uh, looking for a city uh, that has foundations, whose builder and maker is God. What kept Abraham going was the promises of God. What God had said to him. What keeps you moving, what keeps you hopeful, what keeps you out of trouble is you pursuing after what God has called you to do. You have to pursue after it. God is not just an exclusive God gives a vision to one person. God has called you for a purpose. God has called you for a reason. You've got to pursue it. And then you'll be all that you can be in God. Come on, give God a praise. Hallelujah. Sister Pam, you can stand up now and believe that. You can stand up now and believe that. Thank you. Stand up, young man. And women, I'm going to get down and pray. Hallelujah. Gracious Father, in the name of Jesus. As we come before you, Lord, we just say thank you and praise you for this service on today. We thank you, Lord, for the anointing that is in this place. We thank you, Lord, for the subject on today, pursuing the promise by faith. Lord, put it in our hearts, put it in our minds that we pursue the promise by faith. Lord, you have called us. Lord, you have cleansed us up. Lord, you have made ways we have been no way. You have tried our feet. Lord, bless us to pursue after the great and precious promises. Yeah. Now, Lord, we thank you for delivering us from sin. Yeah. But Lord, it's much more greater than that. Yeah. It's much more powerful than that. Yeah. Bless us, Lord, not to be just hearers of the word, but doers of the word that you have called us to do. Yeah. And Lord, we believe your word. And by faith, Lord, we say we trust you. Yes. We trust you, Lord. Yes. We believe in you. We have confidence in you. We put our hands in your hands. We lay down our lives for you, Lord. We trust you on today. We believe you on today. Father, we thank you. And we praise you. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Hallelujah. And I lift your hands. May the Lord watch between me and me while we're asking. Work for another. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Pursue after God. Amen. Pursue after God.